Article 10 of the Articles on State Responsibility expressly deals with the attribution of the conducts of armed groups to a state. In particular, it deals with insurrectional movements, which becomes the new government of a state. And any movement, insurrectional or other, which succeeds in establishing a new state in part of the territory of a pre-existing state or in a territory under its administration. Article 10 provides for a particular mechanism of attribution in those cases. All the violations of international law, including, of course, IHL violations, committed by the armed groups are attributable to the state providing that they take control of the government or successfully create a new state. In other words, attribution applies retroactively. It gives rise to the international responsibility of a state for acts which were not attributable to that state at the time when they were committed, since the author was not the organ of the state yet. What is the rationale behind this particular standard of attribution? It is highly debated. Some argue that the rationale is the representativeness of the rebels. Proponents of this view argue that the rebels represent the population of the state or the population of the territory seeking independence. Thus, is the state that they represent that must assume the responsibility of their wrongful conducts. However, such rationale is flawed in two respects. First, not all of such rebels represent the population. Second, this would limit the scope of application of Article 10 by making it applicable only to rebels representing the population. This is the reason why the International Law Commission opted for another rationale. The continuity between the existing or the new state and the rebels, justifying that the former would be the responsibility for the violations committed by the latter. However, this rationale is also open to criticism. The transition from rebel groups to new government or state is often characterized as much by discontinuity as by continuity. In addition, although the International Commission intended to give the widest scope to that standard of attribution in order to avoid situation of impunity after civil wars, the Commission took a step back with respect to the attribution of the conduct of insurrectional movement. It was conscious of the potential negative impact that a systematic application of this standard would have on the stability of post-conflict states. The Commission therefore excluded its application in, and I quote it, the case of governments of national reconciliation formed following an agreement between the existing authorities and the leaders of an insurrectional movement. Finally, as emphasized by International Law Commission in its commentary, one must note that Article 10 is without prejudice to any responsibility that the armed group could bear itself for its own conduct under international law. For example, for a violation of ICHEL committed by its own forces.